So publishing a book online is an overwhelming thing, all right? Uh, I've been talking about it. This makes 14 weeks in a row. Why is it overwhelming? There's so many options. It just, it gets to a point like you're like, where, where do I go? What do I do? Who is one of the places? So I thought, you know what? Let me just curate a who's who list of different platforms that self-publish books online. And today's an interesting one. It's actually a company called Blurb. And we're going to talk about that in today's episode. So make sure you stay tuned. And this is episode 75. 75 weeks of running straight. I can't believe that. That just blows me away. Uh, and I thank you so much. If you're a new listener, welcome. You've got a lot of content to cover in the backlog. And if you're a returning listener, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time to me. And it tickles me to death that you would do that. And so we get to talk about one of my favorite things in self-publishing books. And we are on the 14th episode straight of talking about different avenues you can publish your book to. The problem with self-publishing books today is there's so many options. Who do you go with? Which one should you choose? Should I publish to KDP? I heard Apple iBooks is pretty good. What about Barnes & Noble? Well, I'm demystifying that process here. And since this is the 14th episode, you know that we've covered quite a bit of ground. But we're going to be covering a, another platform. And they're an aggregate publisher, meaning that they will distribute your book to various avenues on your behalf. In most instances, they do it in exchange for a royalty split. So, for instance, if you were to do it through an aggregate publisher like draft to digital they will typically charge you 15% of your net profits. Not too bad, right? If you look at something like Publish Drive, though, they charge a monthly subscription fee in order to do it, and you get to keep all of the revenue that's coming in from each of the sales of each of the avenues. Well, Blurb is... A little different and it's mired in a little bit of questions I've got more questions today than I do have answers but I'm hoping that I can give you enough information that you can say yay or nay that you want to stick with this so what is blurb now full disclosure I'm just curating information about them I have never used the platform I started to play around with it a little bit and I kind of discovered there was a bit more of a learning curve in this platform then would, would allow me over say a couple of hours. So I was like, ah, you know what? Okay, I, I got a good idea as to what's going on. The big thing I'm gonna give them kudos on, you know that I'm really, I, I get behind the Alliance of Independent Authors. And if you have not heard of the Alliance of Independent Authors, they're a not-for-profit organization that's run by indie authors for indie authors. And they typically look out for you and your best interest as an indie author. So with, them, they actually have a watchdog service, meaning that they have someone that vets all of these different services that are online. And Blurb, oddly enough, is on there and they have an excellent rating. Now, I know from an inside source, someone who actually had her business vetted through them. She said it was thorough, like they really dig deep and they need to make sure all of the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. And uh, so that means that when you can get a stamp of approval from Ally, then that is really, really good. So that made me stand up at attention and say, okay, we've got to look at Blurb. We got to add them to the conversation. And oddly enough, as I'm going through and I'm doing some of the research about Blurb, I stumbled over a post from Lulu. And Lulu was another company we covered before, and they have actually former sponsors here of this channel. Big shout out to Chelsea Bennett. With Lulu, they actually had a post about Lulu versus Blurb, and I'll tell you, it's it's neck and neck when it comes to what each of the platforms offer. So what Blurb offers is ebook and print book only, no audiobook. And we're gonna take it apart piece by piece, one step at a time. With ebook, this is interesting here. They will take, they will format fixed layout and PDFs. If you can come to the table with them already set as an EPUB 3, 
then you're good to go. But otherwise, it's gonna cost you $9.99 for the fixed layout and $4.99 for PDF. Now you're saying, oh, no, wait, hang on. I gotta pay? Well, it's, it's a one-time fee for that book. That's it, one-time fee. Uh, there's no royalty charges thereafter. So you're making 100% of whatever the avenue is that's coming in. So kind of like what I was saying with Draft to Digital, where they would take 15%, or like Publish Drive, where they're paying, you're paying subscription fees every month. It's just a one-time fee for the ebook. So that's not bad. They do distribution to the Apple Bookstore, to the Blurb Bookstore, and to Amazon. Now, what I could find out so far was if you're distributing to Apple and Amazon, you get 70% royalties on there. So that means that Apple takes 30% when you distribute there, and when you distribute to Amazon, they take 30% as well. Okay, seems fair enough. Um, I'm, I'm with it. I had to do a little bit of digging. So what's the percentage royalty that you're getting through the Blur Bookstore? I couldn't get an exact answer. And this is the part. I'm gonna talk about this towards the very end. They got a lot of information. They have a lot of information. In fact, I would say it nearly parallels what you're gonna find in information on Smashwords. And that's one of my biggest gripes when it came to Smashwords is there's so much information and not enough to where they abbreviate some of it. To where it's like, I need a quick answer. What's the royalty here? What's the royalty here? How much do I have to pay? Things like that. And unfortunately, you're having to dig through this FAQ that is just miles deep. Sometimes it's a bit too much, but I'm gonna talk about that towards the end. So at any rate, we at least know through Apple and Amazon, you're getting 70%. I'm assuming, now notice I said assume. I'm assuming based on some of the vague references to the Blur bookstore, that you're collecting 100% of all profits. That has me very interested. Very interested. You try to look through any other like places that has like a bookstore front, they're typically gonna take in some type of percentage. If Blurb is distributing to their bookstore and you're collecting 100%, all you have to do is pay the upfront fee, uh, hello, sign me up, that sounds great. Because then all I have to do is direct traffic over to the Blurb bookstore, collect 100% of the profit. Uh, that sounds awesome to me. I mean, even if you were to distribute, say, an ebook through Gumroad, you're still going to have to pay a nominal fee. Whereas with this and Blurb, you only have to pay that upfront fee and everything thereafter is gravy, baby. So sign me up. Now, this is the part that I find most intriguing is their print options. By far, by and large, I have never seen a print-on-demand distributor have so many options when it comes to print books. I mean everything. They honor photo books, trade books, otherwise known as like our paperbacks that we're typically doing, you know, us authors are, 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 are part of. And they also do magazines and then a random thing, like I don't know why it is, wall art. Okay, Blurb offers wall art. So there, there you go. If you want to see about doing some, you know, stuff like my background here, you can do that through Blurb. Pretty cool, I think. Um, is it something that's a necessity for you as an author? Eh, that's debatable. All right, so the variations of print books is just absolutely phenomenal. There's paperback, there's hardback, and there's hardback with dust jacket. Pretty awesome. The paper types vary based on what you're distributing. So I'm gonna give you a range here. And that higher range is gonna probably be focused more on say full color, print books, and more importantly, photo books. So the paper type is 50 pound, which is kind of the standard that you see through Kindle Direct Publishing when they print out their books or Ingram Spark. And it goes up to 140 pound, which means very thick. You're talking like a coffee table book will have this. Again, depends on the book type. They have numerous types of paper. I mean, it's not just cream and white. They have everything you can think of, everything. It's, it's mind boggling the number of options you can actually select. The trim sizes though, this is where we gotta pump the brakes a little bit. The trim sizes, if you're just doing trade books, you're looking at five by eight, six by nine, eight by 10. That's where it kind of gets a little bit underwhelming. 
I couldn't find if there's like a customized feature or if we're just limited to that. You can go to photo books and I know photo books had up to five. But remember, when you're doing black and white print, it's kind of a base cost. It's not gonna really cost all that much. When you go to full color, and this is across all mediums, it doesn't matter. Full color will always cost more. So if you're like, ah, I really wanna have this trim size, you end up selecting photo book. Well, here's the thing is, you're going to saddle yourself with that expense or you're gonna saddle the person you're selling it to with that expense since it's print on demand. So your base cost significantly increases when you want to go to those different trim sizes because it's only available through photo books. Have me kind of scratch my head, but at least you know where they stand. You know, like if they're selling just these three types of trade books and the trim sizes, then it probably sells. Most likely they don't have it available in the other ones because maybe it just doesn't sell as much. And it completely makes sense to me. You can create your own book with their book right software. And I'm using quotations on book right. Right is actually spelled W-R-I-G-H-T. Book right, all one word. I didn't get the opportunity to download the software or fiddle around with it, but uh, I heard a lot of great reviews about this. Actually heard, I read a lot of great reviews kind of scoured a few forms and a lot of people say it's it's great it has a little bit of a learning curve they also have some templates available if you want to use in design as well but uh, at any rate the book right uh, software it's a free desktop software to design beautiful books magazines and wall art yeah wall art here it goes it shows itself again the distribution for the print books this is one i had to just kind of i just kept digging and digging and digging and digging and all i could find is they distribute to the Bur blur bookstore again not sure what you're getting for royalties there. Amazon and Ingram, which Ingram, by the way, has over 40,000 different retailers they feed out to. On Blurb site, they say Ingram only has 39,000. I think they probably haven't caught up with what Ingram is actually saying on their website. Some of you might be familiar. I actually talked about Ingram Spark not too long ago, and that's one of the companies that's underneath the Ingram content group umbrella, and they have possibly the widest distribution for print books in the world and they just broke ground in australia i believe recently so having ingram in your corner fantastic so that right there is a win-win all right if you want distribution to amazon there is a dollar 35 fee per book and amazon marks it up 15 percent huh so you're telling me that if I price my book at $10, make it available for the Blur bookstore at 10 bucks, Amazon, it goes distributes there, Amazon's gonna mark that up by about 15%, which roughly comes out to, uh, forgive me, 15 cents? Uh, no, not 15 cents, a buck 50. Come on, Dale, get with your math. So it's gonna be charged 11.50 on that platform. I tried to see if there was any way around this. Um, to my knowledge, Amazon typically, if they see a com competitor, like what they would be through distributing through Ingram, um, they'll probably price mark. They'll price mark it down. So though they have that 15% markup, they might end up marking it back down to that $10 level. I can't say that for a fact. I just know through my experience of distributing beyond Amazon, they see a price lower. They're gonna price match that. That's just their thing. Blurb also says, and I quote, sell your self-published book as soon as it's finished. In a few clicks, people can buy your book directly from the Blurb bookstore without any listing charges or fees. Okay, I'm digging that, but I'm just, I. I had to dig to find that, that quote. I had to really like, okay, what's, what's this going on here? They do have an entire chart that breaks down how much it's going to be base cost for the type of book that you want to print out. And they essentially say, this is the base cost. You put in how many pages you want on a, on a thing. And then they say pretty much everything beyond that point. So let's say your book's $10 to do a base cost. If you market at 15 bucks, that means you're gonna get $5 per. 
I kind of like that. I'm digging that. Once you've published your print book, the nice thing is it is available for ebook conversion. Remember the fees I told you before? They're going to probably end up charging the $9.99 and the $4.99 for the PDF. So just as a heads up, here's the interesting part. This only applies to photo books. So if you're the type of person you're like, hey, I want to go do a photo book. This looks fantastic. Or you want to publish your self-published writing through a photo book, heads up. They will put their branding for the blurb logo in the last page of your book. And they're allowing pretty much like, hey, it's free, you know, pretty much with the print costs included for you to do that. If you want to remove the logo, it's a 25% upcharge. Yeah. So that means if your $10 base cost print book, you know, and you want to remove that logo, it's going to be a base cost of $12.50. That one had me sh kind of scratching my head, like, Okay, I'd be curious to see how large the logo is because I mean, if it's not all that bad, I'd just leave it in. It's the last page of the book. It's not like it's going over my face in the about the author section. Not worried about it. All right, so the payouts. Let's focus on the payouts. You have to meet a $25 minimum threshold. And this varies per region. They have a few other regions and various currencies and such. And rather than trying to muddy up the waters, I just thought I'd say, okay, you have to make $25 before they pay you out. They do it through two different methodologies of PayPal or check. They lean in favor of using PayPal. In fact, they incentivize you for that. You will only have a $1 processing fee if you use PayPal. Whereas if you use check, they will do a $5 processing fee. They really want you to use PayPal. So PayPal, you get paid out 15 days after the close of the month. Okay, you got my attention. Now keep in mind, they are an aggregate publisher. So sure, the things that are available through Blurb's bookstore, you're gonna get 15 days after the, the close of the month. But remember with Amazon or Ingram, there's a 30 day refund policy for the print books. So you're typically not gonna see that in your hands until it comes over into Blurb's hands and then yours. So typically, if something sells, say on Amazon, you're gonna get that cost, that uh, sale, 30 days after the close of the month into your Blurb dashboard. At that point, Blurb kinda plays as, a, um, as an escrow. They'll hold on to that money until like the refund window has closed and then pay you out. So where you might have made a sale in December on Amazon, you may not see that until about the beginning of, say, February, so like February 15th. So hopefully that makes sense. But uh, PayPal, 15 days after the close of the month. Checks are 45 days after the close of the month. Uh, here's a few miscellaneous things to kind of be aware of. They have API integration for print books. So kind of like what I mentioned with Lulu, if you have someone, a web developer of some sort that knows their way around API, good luck, because they're gonna cost a pretty penny. But when you do get somebody who knows what they're doing for integration of API, this means that you can actually make a, your books available for sale on your website. I really tried my best to learn how to do it through Lulu, and the API is, is a little overwhelming at times. Uh, so I just said, mm, forget about it. I'll just focus on Shopify for Lulu. For this one, though, it's it's API. It's it's not Shopify. It just will integrate with your website. They do have large order services. So in the event that you want to buy a bulk of your books, uh, it sounds like they actually give a discount beyond what they do. And I'm going to talk about the pros and cons here in a little bit about the cost of, of everything. And last but not least, they actually have a service called Hire an Expert, and they will walk you through the whole process. Before I kind of give my final thoughts on Blurb, and it's it's kind of a mixed mixed standpoint, and I hate to do this to you folks when, when I do this, but uh, before we do jump into that, I just want to let you know, first of all, it's been my mission throughout 2020 to positively impact over 100,000 self-publishers and authors' lives, whether it's inspire or motivate them or educate them or even help them to where they increase their income as an author. 
And if I've done some type of a positive impact in your life, and you're listening to this podcast, or you're watching it on YouTube, and you say to yourself, man, you've really been very, very helpful, then this would be really awesome. The best way for me to measure how I've positively impacted the community is through the amount of subscribers I have over on my YouTube channel, Self Publishing with Dale. I'm on my way to 100K over there on that channel. I want you to be a part of that 100K sub club. And the way that you can do that is go to dalelinks.com slash YouTube and you can hit that subscribe. You're gonna bring, ring that nail bell, yeah, that's easy for me to say, ring the bell notification icon so you don't miss a single one of these videos and become part of the 100K sub club. All right, my final thoughts when it comes to Blurb. Is Blurb worth it? There's a few things we gotta kind of weigh in on. They are super transparent about the pricing, the base cost of the print books. They essentially say, you set your profit margin per copy, which becomes part of the customer facing retail price. But on the other end of things, I found myself overwhelmed. When I'm curating this information, I really want to find this stuff easy. And for someone who nerds out about this, I'm okay spending a few hours studying a platform but the average person who really doesn't have the time to do that, they're too busy working on their manuscript or marketing and promoting their current book, blurb. They don't have the time to sit here and scale through all your FAQs and try to search up things. And I tried to use their search feature and it never brought back things that I wanted. Too much information. Curate that stuff down. Put it together on the things that people really want to know the most. What are the royalties for each distribution avenue? I don't know. I have no idea because they aren't saying anything. They're saying some ambiguous type things. And the only way for me to know is if I just publish through them and I don't want to publish through them until I know. It's a chicken and the egg type thing. So how much are the upload fees? I mean, are there upload fees for the print books? Do I, am I forced to do a proof copy? Because I know Lulu, if I want distribution to Amazon, I have to order a proof copy. Do I got to do that through Blurb? Don't know, have no idea the base cost of the print books. I've read nothing but good things about the print quality for Blurb. A lot of people say it's just, it's best. It's the best in the industry. Ah, but it's tough for me. I'm looking at the comparison of the base price for one of their books versus say Lulu versus Ingram or versus KDP and it's significantly higher. Is that why we're getting more royalties? Is that why we're getting a better payout? Is because we're sacrificing it through a higher print on demand cost? I'm just gonna say is, ugh, the prices are too high. It really kind of just turns me off. And I'm not sure at this point. I'm just on the fence about them. And the other thing that's a kind of a deal breaker for me is there's no flowable or reflowable text layout for ebooks. Yeah, having fixed layout is good for say iBooks, but what about when you're distributing to Amazon? Here's the thing, Amazon actually rewards ebooks for having reflowable text. In fact, there's actually even specific categories like great on Kindle that if you don't have reflowable text, guess what? You're not going to be eligible for that program. So not having reflowable text is going to be a huge hindrance. If you're not familiar with reflowable text, it means that essentially your readers can be able to change the size of the fonts. And that can be a real deal breaker for me. Is Blurb worth it? You're probably wondering like, Dale, okay, come on, what do you say? I'm on the fence. And until I can actually find out some solid answers to some of these things, I can't recommend them one way or the other. I can only say that when Ally has their stamp of approval on there, then I at least trust them enough to hear them out. Hey folks, as we start to wrap it up here, I wanna of course ask that you subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcasting platform and leave a comment on a YouTube video over on the podcast channel or leave a review. And it just so happens I actually got a review from Video E is the name and uh, the title is actually great content. Dale does an excellent job giving quality information and content to the self-pub world. This podcast has helped me so much as I've been writing and illustrating my first children's book Thanks so much, Dale, for all the work you do to help indie authors. Thank you, Video E. I appreciate you dropping that review over on Apple Podcasts. 
That means the world to me. Hey, folks, next week, join me. We're going to be going on and pushing forward to episode 15 of Self-Publishing a Book Online. We're going to talk about another avenue called Tableau. That's spelled T-A-B-L-O. And I'm going to do a deep dive like we did with Blurb today. In the meantime, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I will chat with you next week.